This week's review is on the right wheel system, while we discuss the importance of dolly and slider shots, and we get to find out the epic conclusion to Tony's craziness last week. DVTV starts right now. This episode is made possible in part by Small HD, the world's smallest high definition monitors, Rode microphones, CPM film tools, your lightweight solution for caging the beast. Tony, looks like you're going to sit this episode out, buddy. Hmm? Based on the feedback we got uh, and seeing the episode, you got a little crazy. Did you even see the episode? You asked people what they would name their manservant. Their manservant, Tony. This is a film show. Hey, welcome guys to DVTV. I am John Reed. You may notice that Tony is not around. Well, he actually got a little hyper and we had to lock him in a closet. So, in place of the normal uh, rug and reel of Tony Reale talking, we're going to do a product review on rig wheels. What's great about rig wheels is it's a slider slash dolly system solution. Relatively inexpensive. And as you may know, that anytime you uh, go online for your do-it-yourself stuff, and it just costs a lot of money and a lot of building. And what I really like about this whole setup is they offer the solutions directly to you as a customer and it's relatively easy to assemble, uh, great bearing systems in the rig wheel setup and they provide for some uh, pretty amazing shots. So we're going to show you some of those example shots and how we shot those as well as our pros and cons of rig wheels. The thing that impressed me the most about the rig wheels was the fluidity and the motion in the wheels. Uh, the bearing setups are really nice. A lot of times what will happen is whenever, uh, most of you probably know this, you go out, you try to find an inexpensive solution and it's supposed to work just as good as anything else and then you get it and you realize it doesn't. I can honestly say the rig wheel setup works very, very nicely. And the bearings work well whether it's in the track system that uh, they do sell on rig wheels or you're using a PVC piping or dowel rod or any of those types of solutions or you could even be using a smooth surface like a tabletop, it works really well. And um, what is great about this portion of it is that it actually reacts very well to gravity and friction. So when the camera is on there with a platform or a rig or any of those types of things, it actually works seemingly better because it creates that tight tension. So, um, and you may have noticed in some of those test shots, uh, very, very smooth setup. Now one thing I will tell you is that um, I have a do-it-yourself dolly setup with uh, your typical roller blade wheels and your plywood and PVC piping and you know the typical YouTube dolly solution. Now it works very very well but it's bulky. Um, the other thing too is that lining up uh, the holes and the drill holes and all that it was, it was a pretty uh, it was a larger project than it seemed like it was supposed to be. The thing that I really like about the rig wheel setup is that you're talking about a couple pieces of pipe or a couple pieces of the trim and then putting these, either attaching them to a cage unit or even drilling through a piece of press board. But you're talking about very minimal construction to be up and running in a brief moment of time. So one thing that they had provided, and I will tell you, is that um, we do use the cage system for uh, CPM film tools. I will tell you it's worth saving the money to go to something like that versus dealing with the press board. The reason I say that is because with something that's pretty basic, just a basic uh, C-clamp mount, and um, changing over your bolt system and things like that, you can actually just attach these right to the rod systems and either suspend from the rail system on the bottom or slide it across the top or even across a tabletop. They do have a system that's called box track. And what it does, it actually runs the rig wheels um, in a self-contained steel tubular boxular rail system. And actually, once you look online, you'll go, oh, that's exactly what it looks like. But uh, the thing that's great about it is that you can um, create a very consistent feel and look. 
it, it has a very professional appeal. You know, I talked about the whole dolly system with uh, rollerblade wheels. Unfortunately, when you roll into a, a client shoot, they're not really looking for rollerblade wheels and plywood, okay? So one thing that is nice about a system like this, it's inexpensive, but it looks very, very professional. They recommended cutting off the ends of the track to create the end support system. And I'm going to tell you, don't listen to them. Um, I have a better solution for you. And you never want to cut the box track too short. Um, I've learned is that even with the dolly systems or PVC or anything, it seems like the more distance that you can cover, the better. So don't cut your track. Sorry, rig wheels. But and what I actually found is a good solution is this stuff. Now, I don't know anything about hardware, and I don't work at Home Depot. So I don't know what it's called, but it's easy to find. And the reason I like it is twofold. One is Home Depot, a little plug for them, is we'll cut the stuff for you, which is great. I don't have a lot of tools. But the second thing I like is the fact that it has these oval holes. And the reason I like that is because I ran the bolt through the, uh, the box track system, and with this, it allows me adjusting space. So instead of having a definitive hole on the end, and if I cut it wrong or I drill wrong, then I have a um, low margin of error. Something like this is nice is because I can slap a washer on one side, a washer on the other side, okay, and then just run a nut right on top of the, the light stand itself, again being the quarter inch 20, and then it allows me to slide my track system all the way down to one end, so where the holes are, it's forgiving and adjust, can tighten down, slide it to the other end, tighten down, do the same, and now I have an exact system even though I don't have exact holes drilled. So that would be my recommendation. Uh, you don't have to do it. You can always cut off track. There's a lot of other solutions. We'd actually love to hear about them if you uh, already have the rig wheel system. So uh, in summary of all of this, what I'll tell you is I do personally recommend the whole rig wheel setup. I was very, very impressed with it, impressed with the fluidity movement of the wheels. I did like the box track system, even though I gave them a little bit of grief. I do think that saving money and going to something um, like a cage system is better. The only reason that Rig Wheels even offers that is they're trying to offer you a low-cost solution. They're just showing you a little bit of the do-it-yourself stuff. But I would say it's a good solution because then you can keep the Rig Wheels attached to something at all times. Um, I do like this system for tabletops especially. Uh, not all of us can afford a seven or $800 slider. You get a smooth surface, a cage, and a camera, and Rig Wheels, and you already have that same shot set up. The other thing I really like is the overhead uh, opportunity with the box track system. And so for me, I would recommend is if you're looking for a low cost solution or you're just looking for a secondary solution for a slider or a dolly, I would give rig wheels a try. Pretty inexpensive setup and we are pretty impressed with them. This episode is made possible in part by Blackbird Camera Stabilizer, designed to be easy to use with great performance. JAG 35, affordable solutions for filmmakers. Manhattan LCD, the affordable solution for high definition monitoring. I think that went really well. Next week, we're going to start doing some kitten poster reviews. Not on my show, punk. Hey guys, welcome back. Unfortunately, John will be unavailable for the rest of the episode, but since he was talking about the rig wheel system, I wanted to continue by telling you guys about the importance of a dolly and slider shot. Now, a lot of new filmmakers will sometimes confuse a dolly shot and a zoom, jo zoom shot and think that they're the same thing, when in fact they're actually two completely different styles of shot, and they shouldn't be used together, but they can both be used for the appropriate moment. Now, the reason for this is that a zoom is when you basically are cropping in on an image. You're magnifying it or your lens is going more telephoto. And this is not something that our eyes can physically do. If we need to f actually see something closer, we, have a ten we would have to actually get up and walk closer to that object. So a dolly shot is more natural. And it's something that uh, can be used to convey lots of different emotions, which we'll get to in a second. But first of all, it's important to note, though, that zooms can be used in a very creative uh, stylization. Um, you'll see them used commonly for action scenes, uh, their whip zooms where you'll zoom in and out of, of a scene. Uh, this is when you're going for more of a documentary feel or action feel, where you do want it to look kind of like a video. And that's okay. That's, there's great purposes for that. But when you're not in a scene like that and you don't want that unnatural kind of news uh, action feel to it, then uh, you should be looking at traditionally using a dolly for that. It's, dollies are much more natural. 
Plus, they're more pleasing because when you dolly, you're actually seeing perspective change. You're seeing objects move in front of each other. You're seeing uh, the dimensions of the room, which is, again, more natural as you would as you physically would move around it. Plus, the fact remains is video is effectively capturing uh, three dimensions in a two-dimensional medium. You can't actually see the depth. I mean, obviously, in 3D movies, you can. But when you're shooting traditionally, you can only see two dimensions. So by adding camera movement, you're effectively allowing the audience to get a better feel for the entire environment. So dolly should be your friend and should be used appropriately. So now let's talk about the different kind of dolly moves that you can do. There's the traditional push-in and pull-out. A push-in has a tendency to be more intimate. It allows you to uh, get closer to a uh, character. This will often be done uh, during moments of realization in a film where the character suddenly just occurred to them something new, you'll do a slow push in, and that, without having to say anything, it conveys to the audience, hey, uh, this character just realized something. Pull-outs have a tendency to be less intimate, where you want to distance yourself from the, the, uh, the main character, and if you want to uh, have the audience feel either sorry for them or some disconnect. So d dolly moves are sometime when you want the, the character to be lonely, or again, if, if there's some sort of argument going on between two characters and you want them to, to feel bad for this one guy and feel better for a different guy, uh, that slow pull out. It's very subtle and shouldn't be, you know, not necessarily done very quickly, but that, the subtlety of that basically conveys an entire emotion to your uh, audience and telling them how to feel. Now, a simple slider shot can be used for reveal. If you don't want to tell the audience all the information in one uh, exact shot, but you don't want to cut away from the shot, you can use a, a reveal shot. Those are very simple um, and can add a little bit of uh, timing to it. Sometimes pacing is very important, obviously, in movies. You don't want to just cut, cut, cut. You want to add some dimension to your shot. So by doing a reveal instead of a cutaway, you can allow that proper pacing and allow the time to build up for the story to be revealed at the proper time. Now one use for dolly moves that can help you out a lot in your filmmaking is just simple basic dialogue when you don't want to cut away. If you're in a situation where you don't have a lot of time to shoot and you can't reset your camera and relight in multiple situations, but you have a longer period of dialogue that may last longer than 10-20 uh, seconds, you may want to use a dolly move for this. That You can basically dolly around the room and follow your characters. This is something you can also accomplish with a Steadicam, but if you don't have a Steadicam and you have a dolly system, you can dolly back and forth, move from one character to another, allow your audience to be kind of moving back and forth like they would if they were standing in that scene, and not be bored by just a simple static shot. Obviously, there are a ton more uses for dolly shots, but let's go ahead and show you a few of the dolly shots that I used in a recent short film and the behind the scenes of setting that up. And we're gonna do that when we get back from the break. This episode is made possible in part by Lightcraft Workshop, the perfect tools to create the perfect image. Cheesycam.com, the latest gear reviews and DIY video and photo projects. Obviously, dollies are a great tool to have on a shoot. Whether it's a small slider or a full dolly system, it can definitely improve your productions. Now let's take a look at some behind the scenes footage of a recent shoot that I did. I have the Kessler Crane pocket dolly, and I also have their full dolly system with the flex track. And I, I really like this system. It's helped me out a ton to accomplish specific shots that I wouldn't be able to accomplish without having these. Now, I, I did use the dolly by itself without the jib attachment for a longer shot. It was towards the beginning. Uh, first of all, I didn't have time to do a full setup with the, the establishing shot and then the reversal shots. I only had time to just do light one scene and, and shoot it. So by having this full long dolly shot, I allowed the characters to converse back and forth and not have it be just full wide static and boring. Uh, so I really enjoyed having the dolly for that. And plus having the flex track, I was in a very tight situation. I didn't have the ability to bring full length track in there. Um, and try and, and I kind of had to maneuver for the peninsula that was in front of me. So I had to move the camera back and forth and by having that flex track, it allowed me to basically curve uh, the track exactly where I needed it to be and cram into this small situation. So these are some things that you can build yourself, but having this kit from Kessler Crane helped me out and I really enjoyed it. Now for another example, uh, I used the Kessler Crane system for a very short move but the flex track and having the full dolly and jib kit allow me to get into a position that I would not have been able to accomplish without it. Uh, I was doing this move where the car would come up and reveal the driver as being 
crammed into this smart, small little smart car. And the problem I was running into is that I couldn't get close enough with the lens that I had to the driver for the proper reveal. And I didn't want to be super wide and I wanted to be closer as the car came forward. So by having the camera on the jib, that allowed me to get the camera at the proper position for what I wanted. Now, the problem was obviously I didn't, my slider wouldn't work at that position. So by having the dolly track, I was able to set everything up and move the entire camera while on the jib for a great reveal. This can also be used for something like a over the bed scene or a position where you can't physically have the dolly below the camera, but you want the camera extended out. So this is a great tool to have in conjunction with the jib together. So these are just a few examples of productions that I've done where a dolly was necessary and helped the story out. It's really important to, to remember that you should be using these tools to help the story, not just to add production value. Uh, a lot of people just they get a new toy and they just want to try it out. And that's okay sometimes to add a little production value to your shorts or add some variety, but don't be just using them all the time and overuse them. They should be used as a great storytelling tool. Want more Next Wave DV in your life? Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube to be notified when the next episode airs. Visit our website for daily posts on the latest digital video news. Like us on Facebook to join the Next Wave DV community. And follow us on Twitter for behind-the-scenes news and pictures.